Look at this. Surrounded by the seminal headlines crew here on Warchant TV. My name is Tom Lang. Jeff Cameron, top left. Irish Ophel, top right. Corey Clark, bottom right. You got the wildly popular Jeff Cameron show host, managing editor, senior lead writer here at Warchant.com. Today we are talking Warchant hot topics. Baseball, time to put on the baseball cap, everybody. What would a successful first season look like for head coach Link Jarrett? So we'll start with this real quickly, a little game. 16 national seeds now these days, 1 through 16. FSU hasn't competed at that level for a little while. Who thinks the Knowles could be a top 16 national seed by the end of the season? Show of hands, any of you three? Could be. Oh, okay, all right. So Ira's a little shaky there. Ira, we'll start with you. Talk about a successful first season for Link Jarrett and what's the upper level of what FSU could do. Uh, you know, look, I just think it's going to be a successful first season. I, I don't have any doubt of that. I mean, I think they're going to be better in a lot of areas. I think they're going to be more buttoned up. They're going to be cleaner. Uh, they're going to play sharper and smarter and all those things. Uh, but there's still questions about the the overall talent level. And so, um, you know, I think, you know, it's possible that they could be a team that that hosts in, in the, in the uh, you know, be one of the top 16 teams and host in the postseason. Uh, I just don't know that I would put money on it. And I don't know if they don't do that, that it's a disappointment. Uh, I think just being in the tournament, having a good solid season is enough to make me feel like things are going in the right direction. But again, I'm so confident in, in what Link Jarrett can do and that staff can do that I don't know that I'm going to be super focused on the results with a roster that he inherited. All right, we'll go bottom right. Corey, you're up next. There's been a lot of gripes uh, to be had with his baseball program. Some of the things that drive you nuts, just like the rest of us, base running, defense, to name two. The um, video board. The, <laughs> yeah, Corey's maybe, biggest issue. Maybe yeah, puddles. Uh, trees that are blocking your view yes. from a third portion <laughs> of the grand exactly right. Uh, all right, define a successful first year with Link Jarrett at the helm for you. Yeah, I, I think NCAA tournament for sure. Um, a two seed at worst, I think. Um, well, no, you could be – it almost like the, the results matter. Clearly, it's Florida State baseball. But, again, I'm not trying to uh, qualify everything or sit on the fence, but it's how it looks. Uh, it has not looked like a good product. They, they've won some games the last few years. It has not a, been a good product. They've had elite starting pitching for long stretches. They struck out a ton of batters, which was good because they couldn't field it real well, and they struck out a ton in the batter's box. I would love to see a lot less of the latter. Uh, you, you know, I just want to see the ball put in play. I want to see guys that – look like they know how to run the bases, have been coached to do so, and they don't commit two and a half errors a game. If, if they can cut that down, it's not going to be perfect. They're going to make some errors. They're going to make some errors on the bases. But if they can look like a, a much more, I don't know, well-coached team, then that's what that's all we're looking for, right? That's that's all we're looking for. Yeah, if they play cleaner baseball, I think everybody who's watching this video would say, I'll throw a like underneath War Chant TV's video hmm. on Baseball Hot Topics for that. So make sure to like, hit the subscribe button. Jeff, you said something about football in the past that I think would apply here. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, you would like to see a group that looks coordinated. <laughs> and maybe Florida State, especially out in the field and on the base pass, never uh, were, at times did not look very coordinated the last few years. So define success on your terms for FSU baseball in 2023. No standing water in Hauser. Mm. Uh, I'm going to look hard and long at those fans to see that they've been dusted uh, as opposed to the four-inch thick dust that sits on top of those fans currently. Uh, no, oh. honestly. I about the ceiling fans, not, yeah. not, not the uh, older season Not ticket. the actual oh, no, fans, no, no, the, yes. The season ticket holders, they can be dusty. <laughs> and musty if they'd like to be. But uh, no, no, the fans themselves have need to be cleaned off and, and we need to make the place presentable. Honestly, I agree really in a combination of things that Ira and Corey said. I, I think the team has a chance to be pretty good. And I think, first of all, they will be good because they're not talentless. This is not a place that's devoid of talent. He's not inheriting an empty roster, whether it's Smith or Carrion or Farrar. They've got players, Tibbs. They've got some players. It'll be interesting to see who's in the rotation. Uh, but, but honestly, I think they will run the bases better. I think they'll play with a better, higher level of confidence. I think that was a fractured group the last few years here. And I think some of the problems maybe off the field in the clubhouse – bled onto the field. So I think that uh, having a fresh start, having a cogent plan and a coach that is really attention to detail oriented, I think this team is, is going to play well and they're going to be excited to play together. And so I think that alone will raise a level of confidence every time they step into the box. And, you know, again, 
Do I think they're an elite team that is on their way to Omaha? Probably not. But do I think that they compete at a high level in the ACC and break into that top 25 early in the year and maybe surprise people? I do. I think they, they have enough talent here to do that. That's the thing I'd say, too, about this group is, you know, Mike Martin Jr. and Coach Metcalf and the other support staff members here at Florida State left them a decent signing class if Link yeah. Jarrett could retain them as he took over in Tallahassee for this 2023 signing class, and they did. They retained most, if not all, of that talent. So to me, break, I'll go grab him for a separate thing. This is going to be B-roll laden, so uh, okay. he's trying to fix his camera. All right. So three, two, one. So to me, there's talent here that's good enough for Florida State to make it to a Super Regional, to make it to Omaha, if the pieces are in the right place, and then they can get the message, unlearn some of the bad, learn some of the good. I think there's enough talent here, and also baseball being what it is, for FSU to make some noise in the postseason. Jeff, we'll start. We'll do a little snake draft. We'll go back to you. Do you think this team has enough potential talent to make a run deep into the postseason if the pieces are in the right place? Yeah, I mean, uh, with baseball, you're always going to look at pitching. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I think that there will be – first of all, if you eliminate the mistakes on the base paths every week – like we saw last year, then you're going to be able to score a little bit more often. You're going to put yourself in a position to drive in runs more consistently when guys aren't getting picked off of first base despite second base being occupied. That's helpful. Things like that, you know, go a long way and, and not shooting yourself in the foot. Picking up the baseball on the other side obviously helps out that pitching staff. And again, I, I'm not entirely certain Montgomery, Baumeister, guys like that. We know some of the names that are potentially in that rotation that can pitch, but they, they're going to have to develop an attitude. Those guys are going to have to be more mentally tough. A lot of things that have to happen along the way. But, yeah, man, Florida State has some hitters who I thought lost their way last year, and I think over time some of that confidence eroded. Yeah, they, they got it's baseball. Baseball's fickle. You get into the postseason, weird things happen all the time. Unfortunately, for many years for Florida State – you know, you could be one of the best teams in the country over the bulk of the season. You have one bad weekend and your season is no more, but it works the other way too. As we saw when Florida State went up to LSU and bounced uh, the Tigers from the field in their own stadium and made it out to Omaha despite a less than impressive regular season. So I've never discount any kind of a run in postseason baseball. Uh, it's an antiquated, you know, kind of a weird system uh, the way that it sets up. So uh, yeah, Florida State just got to get there. Corey, can they be interesting enough in May to be not a fluky team that makes a run, but a team that when regional play starts, you say, look out, look out for the Noles. Could they get there? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, again, like Jeff said, they have talent. Uh, they have, they have arms that uh, most schools in the country would kill to have. I mean, they have a, they have a loaded, I want to say loaded as in pro they produced at this level. Wyatt Crowell's is an exceptional pitcher. He's very good. Um, he's the most proven by far, but the whole, the whole pitching staff, has draftability like they're they're all draftable some of them could be elite draft picks they've got to develop but still they there's a lot of talent there that has to be unlocked but if it is unlocked yeah nobody what if Bowmeister becomes like a, a a friday night guy or if carson montgomery finally finds something um not that he's been horrible but he certainly hasn't lived up to what he thought he could be what we thought he could be so if that happens all of a sudden you're talking about a pitching staff that can compete with anybody in the country um, and I do think they have some uh, top flight hitters. I think F Ferrer and Tibbs going into their sophomore years are two of the better sophomore hitters in the country. Um, the, the West Virginia transfer, you can't be worse than they were behind the plate hitting. Uh, well, McGuire Holbrook can hit. He's a, he's an offensive uh, strength, not a liability. So the lineup could be better, should be better, I think. And then, uh, yeah, just it's all the little things, man. Just it also be likable. Like, if you're going to lose, be light. Like, you do the right things well. And if you just get out talented and you lose, it's baseball. But, man, quit, oh, you know, loading up the shotgun and shooting yourself in the foot. It's really hard to watch. And put the ball in play occasionally, too. Be, Our, be a more watchable product. Well, yeah, and also no false bravado. We don't like that around these parts in any sport, the false bravado well, and stuff. Yeah. Ira, uh, obviously, you were the one that was a little bit tentative on the way in. The upper level of what this team could be, they, they have – the raw talent, but there's probably some significant hurdles in order to get there and realize it so soon, right? I like uh, Corey giving the hat tip to several headlines by opening the bottle. Also, <laughs> he stole the thunder from the FSU baseball team at Fan Day. They were going to announce their motto this year, more much, more watchable in 2023. That's all you that, need. That, Just that, please be watchable. That's the motto. You don't have to win. That's what the W stand for. Watchability. You know, here's the thing. I, 
I get what you're, you guys are saying, and Corey, I get what you're saying about the talent, the the upside on those arms. But man, you lost four of your top six pitchers in terms of innings pitched last year. Your whole starting, basically, your starting rotation, and the guys you're talking about, Montgomery and Bowmister. Yeah, it'd be awesome if they live up to that potential, but we just haven't seen it yet. So it's hard to say that that's going to be the deal. Now, Connor Winokur is a really nice pitcher. Um, you know, Wyatt Crowell is a nice pitcher. I think those guys, they not just only have good stuff, but we've seen them pitch, pitch Isn't out of jams. is that why we like Link, though? Uh, because well, we think he could unlock that kind of stuff that maybe he, the previous coach did not maybe unlock? If he does, yes, man, double his salary. Yeah. If, if he gets Carson Montgomery – particularly to be what we think what you know, everybody scouts, everybody thinks Carson Montgomery can be. Yeah, man, double their salaries. They've done an amazing job because it hasn't really happened yet. And those guys, you know, him, him in particular has been here for a little while. You'd like to see it uh, produce. So I just think that, you know, there's so many situations you think about last year, not only did you lose your starters, but you lost your inning eater in Scalaro, the guy who made a thousand appearances. So now there's a lot of situations that, Guys are going to be – they're going to be figuring it out. Like, what can this guy do? Is he a midweek starter? Is he a guy that can come in and put out a fire? Is he a closer? Uh, there's a lot of guys I think their roles are really not defined. When, when Link talked to us last week and he said they haven't defined any roles on the pitching staff, I think that's absolutely true. And until you do that, it's just hard to know exactly what you're going to have. I do think, like you guys, I like some of the bats in the lineup. I think the defense, there's no doubt in my mind, defense and base running are going to be improved. Is that enough to win a lot of games? You know, I think we'll have to see. The I, I, I don't think we can underestimate how important it is that the clubhouse will yeah. be in a better set of circumstances than it was a year ago. I mean, it's For hard. Sure. We've all been in places where we weren't happy to go to work. And if you work with a lot of people who don't do their job or you don't trust, or you're always looking over your shoulder, it can be very difficult to focus on the task at hand and improve in the areas where you got to get better in, better at. And, and I think that alone will go a long way. Now, you're right. They may not have enough front-end pitching, front-line pitching. They may not have enough depth. They may not have some of those things. But like Corey said, if they lose because of that, I think most people will be fine because he's still got to be able to bring his guys in. He's still got to recruit. But if they're, if they're no longer, you know, second-guessing the coaching staff and one another in the clubhouse, I think that goes a long way to taking the field with a little bit more confidence and joy about the game. And especially if it's not leaking as much and there's not exposed electrical wire in the clubhouse, too. That makes for a happier clubhouse as well. So the, so we we pretty much nailed it all down to the, the scoreboard, or the video yeah. board, yeah, the play being a little more watchable, and then less leaks in the stadium. And and that's that's all we're asking for, Link. Well, in the standing water in the, uh, in the concourses, water. too. Well, we that's get for the fan that. experience. I'm, I'm tired of coming out of there with the possibility of slipping and breaking my leg or <laughs> worried about all the old people at the game. Right. Standing room only means something very different at how the <laughs> tournament begins on Friday, February the 17th. If you hear more pep in our voice, don't adjust your volumes. That's real. There is more enthusiasm around the program. We look forward to covering it at Warchant.com. For Ira, Jeff, and Corey, my name is Tom. Thanks for tuning in to Warchant's Hot Topics. And look forward, everybody, to all of our coverage of baseball here on Warchant TV. Hit like and subscribe to the channel on the way out.